Hey, Toby. Yeah, good morning, Toby. How you doing? Not good morning. Good afternoon. The sun's out for the first time in a long time, and it's actually above freezing. Finally. I think. Need to go outside and get some fresh air. You coming, Tobes? Come on. Toby, you coming? I'll come with you. We can both go. Let's go outside. Okay, yeah, group activities. Always more fun, right, Tobes? What's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Lots of noise. Snow's finally starting to melt. It is, like, blindingly sunny. I have no idea what's even on my viewfinder, because I can't see. This is a last-minute video. Very last-minute. The video that was going to come out today, it, it was a lot of yay snow and playing in the snow and with what's going on down in texas that just feels wildly inappropriate extremely inappropriate so it's just it's so sad down there what's happening to everybody so i decided that that just that wasn't right i wasn't gonna put that video out and there isn't much going on in the house or with the plants or out here i mean clearly not gonna be a lot of gardening stuff going on here there was one thing i wanted to mention though Last week's video, when I put all these plastic tents over these sable palms here, the sable miners, I didn't mention something that was pretty important, because I don't think I did. And that was in regards to, I don't, can you even, can we see what's going on here? Probably not. I put sensors inside of these, that way I could pay attention to the temperatures and make sure everything was okay, because you know, we were down below zero for several days. One thing I didn't talk about with these covers, though, was that it gets incredibly hot inside of these when the sun's out. Even with the vents on these are pretty loose, even with these. It's 87 degrees in there right now, where that sensor is. It's clearly not 87 out here. I think it's 34, and it feels fantastic. Oh, yeah, I can feel the heat coming out of there. So that was something that I thought would be important to go ahead and bring up, because having that extreme change between day and night or just hot and cold, this will be 87 right now, but tonight it'll probably drop down to probably into the 20s. Sun won't be out. There's going to be less going on to heat these things up. I mean, it's the greenhouse effect. Plastic and the sun. That's what happens there. Freezing and thawing can cause problems, though, and that can lead to rot. Just having that up and down and up and down and up and down encourages bacterial growth down inside the crowns of the plants. I thought that was an important thing to bring up and mention because I didn't mention it last week. But they're all looking pretty good, though. I don't see any problems inside of these. Cold damage can take a few weeks to show, but otherwise, I think this is good. I'm just gonna leave that kind of loose and open so it can breathe for a while. Oh, you nice and cozy, Toby. <laughs> out know, the snow. It's amazing how nice 38 degrees feels when it's been so incredibly cold. I feel great. I'm not chilled at all. Too early to say how the plants held up. Not much to report there. This entire area I covered with frost cloth. That didn't make it into last week's video. It's to help hold in some of that ground heat. A lot of mulch over here as it is. So that may have been unnecessary. And then I just started grabbing pretty much anything I could that was out here to help weight that frost cloth down. Because when that that polar vortex, whatever, that arctic blast came through here, it was very windy. So that's why there's just random pots and things laying around over here. It's also a great time to be checking for the microclimates. You can see where the snow's melting. The, wherever the snow melts first, that's a warm spot. Generally up against the house with the sun shining, that's always pretty much going to be a nice warmer spot for things. This is where I typically have a really big clump of gingers that come up here. Hedichium fiesta i'm pretty sure that's what's over here we will see how they do i think that those have been down to minus 13 degrees fahrenheit before i'm almost positive but it was just like a quick dip then it warmed back up to normal not like this winter where it dropped below 30 and stayed there for like 20 days and it was negatives for like seven days five days maybe i've never had to deal with that before that i can remember so things are looking Pretty messy over here because of all the pots and things that are stacked up. This whole thing planted up with lemon coral sedum and the, um, what was it? Set Krisha Palea? Palea? <laughs> Purple heart plants, Tradescantias. And uh, I had mentioned in the fall that usually those will come back if we have a mild enough winter. Uh, I don't have much hope for those. It'll be interesting to see what happens over here. So my frost cloth got torn up here, but I can see in there that needle palm's okay. I do think most of the kale and cabbage that I had sitting aside for spring, that might be toast. It's not looking too good. They did have a cover over them, just a frost cloth, but it blew away with the wind. I guess I didn't have enough over there to weight it down like I did with everything else. Over here, I don't know what's going on over here. Magnolias and a bunch of other plants 
stuck inside of there. I think it's funny how whenever it gets really cold where I live, everybody's backyards and front yards just start to look like they're full of body bags. But it's necessary. It works. I I was going to say I could probably uncover this, but I may as well wait because it's going to be like, I think, 50 here in a few days. So I'll make sure they get uncovered. I'll wait until some more snow melts off though because it may as well, I mean, it's going to be warm in there. May as well let them enjoy that warmth. And these are the things that I didn't get around to showing because it got really dark while I was filming last week's vlog. If you saw it, I had to wait for materials and whatnots to show up in the mail. So by the time I was able to get over here, it was just way too dark to film. But these are both very large and old needle palms and they've been doing, well, I don't know how they're, I can't see them, but from looking at the sensors, I've been paying attention to the temperatures inside of them. There's two layers of frost cloth on top of each one with some C7 Christmas lights wrapped on the inside. And it's been staying like steadily in the fifties in those. It's actually been warmer at night inside these than it is inside the plastic that those sable miners are in, which I mean, that's not really that surprising, right? Cause plastic just, the cold pops out of it so quickly. Those are gonna insulate a lot better. And they're all weighted down with empty pots that have some dirt in them. Just a little bit of extra weight. You can see where the snow's melting, which is always reassuring to know that these are in a nice warm location. Warm, I should say warmer location in the yard. Cause you know, they're not really fully hardy here. Needle palms are good to zone seven. You can grow them in zone six, but you gotta be prepared to do this <laughs> with them if should you have a really bad winter. And even in zone five, they're worth a try but it's good to get them into a spot where you know it's warm and they're not gonna freeze to death. Uh, however, I do have one back here that I did absolutely nothing for to protect because I was out of covers and I really have never done much to protect this one. And it's looking totally fine. Look at this. Looks okay. It's main trunk died off several years ago. You might be able to see that in there. I'm not positive it's going to show, but the rest of it really looks better than the other ones did when I wrapped them up. And I saw a particularly warm spot. The snow doesn't look like it's melting any faster than it is anywhere else, but it should be sheltered somewhat by the spruce that's up here. So I think that helps a lot, or at least helps sun some. Ugh. <laughs> Talking's hard. I'm very nervous walking around when there's snow on the ground because it's harder to tell where the path ends and the pool begins. It's the That'd be bad. Don't want to fall in there. I'm not that surprised that that needle palm is doing well because snow does a really good job insulating things. I don't always cover everything up. It's only because we were going below 10 degrees Fahrenheit and I knew that it was going to be dipping into the negatives. That's why I covered all those other ones up. Otherwise, with the sable palms and needle palms, I don't usually sweat it if there's going to be snow, as long as it's not ice. If it's going to be nice fluffy snow, that usually keeps them plenty warm. Helps keep the cold off of them. This is nice, isn't it? Nice to be outside, Toby. Get some sun. No major damage. Everything seems okay. But like I said, though, cold damage can take a few weeks to show. But generally, with those types of temps that we were having, I think that it would have been pretty obvious. What you looking at, buddy? Generally, with negative temps, it shows very, very quickly when it's that cold. When you dip down that low, don't normally have to wait six weeks. You can usually tell pretty fast how bad things are. Now wait to get this hydrangea pruned up. In a couple weeks, this should, assuming it didn't die from the cold, which it should be okay. These are good to zone five, the paniculatas. Heck, maybe even warmer parts of zone four. I'm not positive, but that should be all, oops, didn't mean to do that. But there's some green in there, so that's good to know. Should be okay. I have some ferns over here that I was on the fence about whether or not to cover them up. These are autumn ferns and they're normally pretty tough. They'll usually stay pretty green throughout the winter time and then they'll like kind of just go bleh when spring rolls around and start to not look quite as nice. What you doing? Checking out the ferns, Toby? They're hardy enough though that they will come back no matter how much dieback they end up having from that cold and so far looks okay. A hookura here, her little snow hat on, looking cute. These are all primulas that are in here and I don't, I'm gonna let the snow melt off them naturally that way they can get moisturized. I want to know what's going on under that snow so bad, but I'll wait and leave them be. Snow will melt in a couple of days. The laurel hedge, eh, I think it's okay. A little wealthy, but that's totally normal. I think that's everything outside. Just gonna have to wait a few days for the snow to melt and see what happens to the bananas. Ugh. There's a lot of mulch there and mulch is very effective with insulating, but I don't know, five days, five or five to seven days below zero. We will see. There's mulch there. The snow did help insulate some. I don't think that they will die. I think that would be very unlikely, but it's possible that the pseudo stems that are inside the mulch might have died down to the ground. And if they have, probably fine. They'll regrow from the ground. And these bananas, the bajus, they, you can get those eight to 10 feet, no problem. As long as you have a nice, long, warm growing season from the ground and up, 
they can put on lots of growth in a single season. But I prefer to preserve as much of the trunk pseudostem as I can because that's where if you want them to fruit, which their fruit isn't really very tasty or something you want anyways, but it looks cool. You need to preserve a, a, like a couple feet, if possible, of those trunks. Hey, look at that microclimate. This is good. I'm going to be remembering this the spot. It's like a little oven back here. And sometimes that could be a bad thing. But this area over here is where I put a whole bunch of gingers. Wanted to see how they would do. And this particular row right here from like right around there all the way over. There's not, I don't see any snow over there at all. I'm sure there was some, but most of it's melted off. I could probably and should actually go ahead and, oh yeah, that's warm. I can feel it in there. That feels, that seems inappropriate. Go ahead and take that off the needle palm because I don't want to cook it. Yeah, looks fine to me. How about you? How are you doing? You looking okay? Yeah. That was to be expected, but it is, it's not warm in there. It is hot. That's too much. That'll kill them. The extreme fluctuations, the extreme heat, and then the cool at nighttime, like that'll kill them just as quickly as having too much cold. This is great. I'm really happy to see how warm this area is. That was something I was trying to pay close attention to this winter and having the snow on the ground makes it so much easier because like I said, if you watch where it thaws first, where it melts off first, then that's a really good indicator of a nice warm toasty spot. So any plants that I put in this spring or summer that are only marginally hardy here, this is going to be a good location for them. And I had assumed that that would be the case over here. That's why this is where I put all the sable palms and all those new ginger starts that are over here. But I just wasn't sure. If you remember last year, I got a whole bunch of little baby gingers in the mail. And they just came in so tiny that I didn't want to put them in the ground. I didn't think they would make it through their first winter, especially... I mean, I had no idea the winter was going to be like this, but they, I do not think that they would have stood a chance this year. So I spent a year growing them out in a pot. And uh, next year, I'm going to be plopping all of those in here and see which ones are the most tough. But with a spot's gonna be this warm, like that is over there, I don't know how great of an indication that's going to be to call a plant hardy because it's clearly in a warmer location, but you can divide them up and move them around. Airplane, pardon the noise. All right, careful, buddy, buddy. Come here, come here. You're too close to that edge, that makes me nervous. Come on, come here. Good boy. Yeah, don't stand over there. That's dangerous. In just a few weeks, it's going to be time to start doing all the spring things out here. I'm so excited. In a couple of days, it's going to be absolutely beautiful. And then I think it's going to be back into the 40s, which is normal for this time of year. Anyone who's looking for a tough sedum, I got one for you right here. What are you? What is this? Angelina stone crop. Pardon the shadow. I'll try and keep my shadow out of this as much as possible. Okay, this is a zone three and up. So this is good down to minus 30 to minus 40. If you live in zone three, four, five, six... It's harder to find things that you can keep outside and still have some color on them in the winter time. This would be a great option. This nice stone crop. Nice trailer, low maintenance. I mean, I don't do anything for this thing. It just grows. You can see I haven't even potted it up yet. It's just been sitting here. Hopefully that wind chime wasn't too annoying in the background. Sorry about that. I love walking around the garden in the winter time. I mean, it's a bummer not being able to play with the plants and see all the plants. There's always little things to do, but it's just so, there's so much time to take it all in and be inspired for what you can do in the springtime. One thing I have learned is to remember that this is, it looks like a blank canvas. It is not. <laughs> there have been many occasions where I've been like, oh, I have all these blank spots to fill. I do not. It's just things are sleeping. And that's obvious right now. In a few weeks when there's no snow on the ground and it's just mulch, it's that's when it becomes more of an issue and me needing to remember to control myself and not go too insane with the plants which i fail at every single year this corner back here like basically right in there the, the corner that's a spot i didn't get planted up last year because this whole area is new everything that's in here got planted up last year and the only thing i didn't get around to is i wanted to put something that would grow up kind of something vase shaped like a crepe myrtle potentially maybe i don't know they're only marginally hardy here they're hardy to the ground like they'll die down to the ground and come back but they don't necessarily get that nice they shape to them unless they can keep their wood every year and that can be more of a challenge and i would say with a winter like this i don't think any of my crepe myrtles would have stood a chance we'll see in the springtime with some of them but no, they're probably going to die down to the ground but it would just be so nice because those blinds or not blinds what are those shades drapes draperies whatever the shears that's what those are those aren't going to be there in the spring, in the summer, and early fall. They're just there right now because the view out the window is absolutely hideous right now. And the sun gets pretty intense this time of year in the kitchen too. But it would just be nice to be able to look out that window and see something with lots of flowers on it, like a crepe myrtle. I love that nice, what's it called, panicle shape to the flowers. Maybe this would be a better spot for a panicle hydrangea. 
It seems like a waste of a nice warm spot though, right? Should probably put something there that's a little bit more unique that I couldn't typically grow here because I know that this is a nice warm location. Maybe a palm tree? I don't know, don't get the flowers out of those. But this might be a good spot for like a sable or maybe a pindu, something like that. That might look pretty cool there. Yeah, I need to, <laughs> this is when I need to reel it in, take it easy. Plenty of time to figure all that out sometime in the next couple months. There's a type of hardy chef flare. I think it's Taiwanensis is what it's called. I've wanted one for years. I just, I can't find them in the U.S. I know Monrovia carries them, but I can't, it's not a plant that I'm able to get any of the nurseries. They can't seem to find them on their availability lists. That would look really cool over here. Not really for the flowers, but the foliage. Not positive. The sun might be a little bit too strong right there for them. They're really cool looking plants though. I think they're hardy up to zone seven, but it would probably do better with part sun. I don't know, has anybody grown it? Let me know. Yeah, it would be so nice to have something with flowers on it out this window though. So probably gonna be a crepe myrtle or a panicle hydrangea. There is a tree that has a really nice shape to it and you have to print it to the nice shape. It's called the Seven Suns tree, I believe. That would look neat out this window. I'm slowing down because I'm realizing that I don't, this isn't necessary to go into a video about what's to come in the garden. That's, that'd be something that would be better for like March or April probably. Well, I got the Christmas stuff put away. So there's that, <laughs> it's almost March. No more Christmas in here. There's that sun, so I'm talking about, it's just, it's so intense. I put a frosted film up there and that seems to be working pretty well. What I had up there before was like this really fun film that projects rainbows all over the kitchen, which is fun, but it actually intensified the light instead of made it go away. This seems to be a better solution for up there by far. Look at that humidity, isn't that terrible? It is so dry in here. Outside, fine. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Outside is fine. The humidity is like 80, 90% out there. It's great. But the heater's running overtime and it's really drying things out. The window's finally warmed up enough though that I can start to go ahead and scoop my plants back over there. Remember last, last week I talked about how I had to pull all the plants far away from the windows because it was like 40 degrees. There's like a 40 degree draft coming out from underneath them. Orchids don't really mind that. I think 40s a bit much, but having it dip into the 50s and 60s at nighttime, they're okay with that. It actually helps induce blooming on some of them, at least with my cat layers. They don't seem to mind it. The fowls, they're going to be more prone to rot. Can we even see them? There we go. Much more prone to rot if they're going to sit in temperatures that cool, particularly if their soil's moist. This one, yeah, kind of dry. I have a lot of watering to do. So I'll get on top of here in just a moment. That's gonna do it. I know, weird, pointless video. I thought it'd be nice to go ahead and give them an update on what was going on with the palms outside and I forgot to mention the thing about the plastic that was very important that you need to be able to ventilate it and watch out because it's gonna end up cooking the plants in there even when it's 30 degrees outside. Totally tournamented plant toast. Hope everybody's doing well. I know a lot of us were really affected by this cold, but where I live, like, we were equipped to handle it for the most part. They had to try some new things with the salt, like mixing beet juice and some other stuff. But for the most part, like we can take it here. It's like maybe eight inches of snow. Totally manageable, but Texas, man. I feel so bad for everybody down there right now. Poor gardens and your homes and, I mean, I, should, I can't imagine, can you imagine having a baby or a toddler or just, oh, be an absolute nightmare. So sad. I think this Gloriosum is gonna be happy to get off the top of the fridge and get back into that window, but I have some more plants over in this window that I need to move back out to the grow. It's a whole big thing. Be doing all that next week. There's a lot of plant stuff that needs to get done because it couldn't do much for the past few weeks. It's been so cold, even in here. Out in that growth space, just been struggling to keep it warm enough so that the plants don't die. I mean, I haven't done anything other than like very light watering so that they don't rot because I don't want to be cold and wet because then they rot. And despite those little waterings I've been giving them, they were still looking pretty sad and thirsty when I was out there yesterday. So I gave them another watering. Probably gonna have to keep watering them in very lightly and get them to bounce back. Don't wanna soak them because it's still kind of chilly out there. It's gonna take a few days to warm things up out in that grow area. Nice to see some condensation back in these terrariums. It had been a while since they'd been watered because I wanted to see how long I could go without watering them for the one year update on them. So they had only been watered, I think it was just one time, one of them maybe twice during that entire year and then they got a nice drink as soon as I was done filming that video and it's showing, they're frosted. They really actually shouldn't be having condensation on the glass this time of day. That's not great, we have to keep an eye on that. It's when mold and stuff can become an issue. Typically just wanna see the condensation at nighttime. I'm giggling because why am I talking about this? It's time to go. 
Happy Saturday, everyone. If anybody has any good resources or links to help people out down in Texas, comment those down below. I'll put them in the description of the video. Well, you never got to say hi, Pumpkin, did you? You've been sleeping? Yo, you're so freaking cute. You do not look happy that I came over to your face with the camera right now. I'm so sorry, Pumpkin. Oh, and I hadn't mentioned the table out there. Total mess because the Tiki Bar, it's toast. It, it couldn't handle the snow and the cold that just collapsed. So that's why all of this, all that's supposed to be over there underneath that Tiki Bar. So that's fun. This spring, get to get some new furniture or new storage solutions. That'll be exciting. Comment down below. Say hi. Love talking to everybody. You doing okay? I hope so. Hopefully everyone's hanging in there, staying warm and staying safe. <laughs> As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.